Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna do a pretty easy lesson. You actually kind of already know this. We've had this conversation before. We just haven't given it a formal name and now we are. So the mean value theorem, what is that? Well, let me prove to you that I think you already know it. Okay, first of all, I think you'll even recognize this example. If I took a trip to Naples, two hour car trip, and I averaged 50 miles per hour, average that for the whole trip, does that mean that I had to be going actually 50 at some point? Yeah, it does. Does it mean I could have been going faster and slower? Sure. But if I averaged 50, then I definitely was going 50 at least once. That's what the mean value theorem says, okay? It basically says that your average rate of change has to equal your instantaneous rate of change at some point as long as I didn't stop, okay? So, average rate of change, that's like your algebra one slope. If I had n points, it would be, let's say on the interval from a to b. My average rate of change is like my algebra one slope. Okay? It has to equal my instantaneous rate of change, which is basically the derivative. And that right there is the mean value theorem. Okay, let me show you how it works. Okay, first, we're going to approach this problem graphically and algebraically, okay? Graphically. At approximately what values of x on the interval from 0 to 7 does the graph satisfy the mean value theorem? Okay, well, mean value theorem is one you're going to have to know by name. And when you, whenever you see mean value theorem, I want you to think in your mind, estimated derivative equals actual derivative. Estimated derivative equals actual derivative. Well, the estimated derivative from 0 to 7 is the slope of the secant. So I go to 0 on my graph and 7 on my graph. My estimated derivative would be the slope of the secant from 0 to 7. Now, that has to equal my actual derivative. Well, that's the slope of the tangent. So where on this graph is the slope of the tangent the same as the slope of the secant? Eh, approximately here and approximately here, okay? There's another spot up here, pew, but it's not within the interval from zero to seven, so you don't count that one. So the answers would be the x-coordinate that you think is right here and right here. So I'd say at approximately x of one and approximately x of five, okay? So let's repeat, mean value theorem, estimated derivative equals actual derivative. Then that's it. Okay, so now let's look at the formal mean value theorem. Oops, let me just catch up with my computer. Okay, here's the formal mean value theorem. Okay, actual derivative they write first. So the actual derivative must equal your estimated derivative, algebra one slope, at some point within the interval. And this is the given interval. Now, there are some technicalities that I'll come back to, but it does have to be continuous and differentiable. We'll talk about that in a second. Actually, we'll talk about it right now. If I use that last graph as an example and we go like this, as long as it's smooth and curvy, whatever my endpoints are that I give you, let's say I want to go from here to here, okay, the estimated derivative does equal the actual derivative somewhere within the interval. But if it wasn't differentiable within the interval, then the mean value theorem wouldn't work. Let me show you why. Turn these, the smooth and curvy graph, turn it into a sharp point, like that. Now pick endpoints. Let's say I wanna go from here to here and connect those. That's my estimated derivative. Is it still true that my estimated derivative has to equal my actual derivative somewhere within there? Is there a place within this graph where the slope of the tangent is the same as the slope of my secant? Nope, not true, can't do the same thing. So it has to be differentiable, no sharp points, okay? And it also has to be continuous, and I think that part's common sense. All right, so here we go. I'll show you more on those technicalities at the end of the lesson. Okay, here's an example algebraically. 
Again, as soon as you see mean value theorem, think to yourself, actual derivative equals estimated derivative. Actual derivative is, well, the derivative. The derivative of this, which is 2x plus 2, has to equal the estimated derivative, algebra 1 slope, using these endpoints. And I suggest you actually write it out every time. f of 3 minus f of negative 2 all over 3 minus negative 2. The reason I say write it out like this is a lot of people forget the denominator. Okay, now calculate that. On the left, 2x plus 2 is still 2x plus 2. On the right, figure out what f of 3 and f of negative 2 are by plugging them in here. f of 3 would be 9 plus 6 minus 1. 14, 9 plus 6. Yeah. Now plug in, in, plug in negative 2, negative 2, that would be 4 minus 4 minus 1, so that's negative 1. Okay, so f of 3 minus f of negative 2, all over 3 minus negative 2, which is 5. Okay, so we're plugged in the three, f of 3 to get 14, we plugged in the negative 2 to get the negative 1, and we're just going to clean this up. So we have 2x plus 2 is equal to 15 over 5, which is 3, solve for x, subtract 2. Divide by 2, and that's it. This is the spot on the graph where the slope of the tangent would be equal to the slope of the secant if we connected those endpoints. Okay? So, again, mean value theorem. Actual derivative equals estimated derivative, and then solve. Okay? Now, there are a couple of stipulations. Remember, it actually has to be continuous and differentiable, and they will try to trick you. So they will try to trick you by giving you problems where you can't even do the mean value theorem. And if they do that, you just say, mm -mm, nope, you, don't get, you didn't get me. Mean value theorem does not apply. Here's what I mean. What is the first issue on my first example here? Well, this guy would not be continuous at 2. Is 2 in this interval? Yes, it is. So you'd say mean value theorem does not apply and you don't do any math. Does not apply. Okay. That's a trick. They're trying to trick you because it has to be continuous. So always look at fractions like that. Okay? Also, but if I didn't... Now, ugh, stutter much. If the interval was changed and I said on the interval from, say, 3 to 7, now you could still do the mean value theorem because the place where it's not continuous is 2, but that's not within this interval. Okay? All right. Also, even if the 2 was the end point, and I went from 2 to 5. Now I could also still do the mean value theorem. It just can't be within the interval, one of the inside numbers. All right, how about this next one? What's the issue here? Well, hopefully you know the absolute value graph has a sharp point in it. Where does that sharp point occur? When you set the inside equal to 0. So when x is 3, there's a sharp point. This graph would be a V that looks like this, okay? So is that sharp point within this interval? Yes, it is. Therefore, mean value theorem does not apply again. Okay, they're trying to trick you. If the 3, however, was the end point, you could still proceed. And if the 3 wasn't even involved in the interval, and we went from, say, 5 to 9, you could also proceed. Okay? This next one is a little harder to recognize unless you know what that graph looks like. But when you do the derivative for this one, you get... 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third, okay, which seems fine, but this would not be differentiable at 0 because the denominator would be 0. Is 0 in the interval? Yes, it is. So again, mean value theorem does not apply. So let's review. At the very beginning of the problem, the original function can't have a 0 denominator, and the derivative can't have a 0 denominator. You interpret them differently. This case means the original function is not continuous at 2. This case means the derivative does not exist at 0. Okay? A couple of technicalities. But mostly, it's a very easy um, theorem to work with. Just remember, actual derivative equals estimated derivative. Actual derivative, estimated derivative. Okay? Now you can read again the technicalities. Why is it a closed interval here and an open interval here? That, that's the part about whether it's continuous and differentiable on those endpoints. It's okay if it's an endpoint where the problem occurs, but it can't be in the middle of the interval. Okay? Good luck, guys. I think this is a pretty straightforward assignment. If I didn't explain it well, 
enough, then maybe you catch a YouTube video. I promise you it's not that hard. Estimated derivative equals actual derivative. That's it. Find two things. Good luck. Bye.